Saw to Dave, part two of Epic Week. Appreciate y'all watching. All right, so uh, how do we end this? Oh yeah, okay. So I got me another DSK. So this is not the grand reveal, but this is kind of peeking up to the grand reveal. So this is the Atreyu. I'm not using the light at the moment. I will show you uh, in a minute here. But this is the Treyu. It's a model I don't even know that DSK made. But this is one of the few. If you look at most DSKs, they have flippers and thumb hole. Most of them don't have both. So I figured, why not? I'd give it a try. See what happens. I got a really good deal on it. Dude that I've done business with on a couple of the DSKs. And I dig it. Um, is it my favorite DSK? It's not. Uh, do I like it? I do. Um, I'm glad to have it in the collection. Probably not the one... Like, there's certain nights that, like, this Megalodon, shout out to Plethora Blades. Still, like, this one, f f just beastly flipper, everything like that. This one, this one's, this is a beast, man. Uh, right up there with the kickstand as far as, like, epicness. Like, this is a, this is a beast of a DSK. And so, size comparison-wise, uh, you can see the Megalodon. There you go. You can see the Megalodon is a good bit bigger. Like I said, sorry, I ain't got the lighting on, but I'm just going to show you. Miss Socks, I want to step in and say hello. So, hello to everybody, Miss Socks. You see your cat ass right there. <clears throat> no cat bombs today, thank you. Uh, once again, it's not, it's it's long, but it's not super long, right? So, this is the VXC. This is a pretty big, this is a pretty good size knife. Um, and the Atreyu is bigger than it. So, let's see if we can do a size comparison. But not much. It's, it's it's just a length. It's just a little bit longer. I don't know, this is a shitty way of doing it, so... <clears throat> all right not to beat around the dead bush whatever whatever that's saying is i'm sure that ain't all of it uh i'm gonna transition y'all so i gotta carry the camera in order to show you what the big reveal is this week but i did want to tell you i got the atreyu i'll go into more detail in it when we actually get a good camera we can actually use uh i'm gonna walk it in there handheld so excuse the handheldness and then i'll put you back on a tripod and talk a little more okay y'all hang tight one second all right, so this is normally where I film, recognize the background, everything else. You always see that door in the background, cat tree houses. This is how they get in and out of the shop back over there. So we're walking this way. Oh, look, the kid. What's up, big guy? Hmm? Say hey to the peoples. <laughs> All right, he just wants that. So we'll leave him be for a minute. <clears throat> Through this other door into the shop. You all recognize the Road King. I've done many videos sitting in front of it. Sport Glide, that's Hot Rod's bike. And the old Buell right here. So why am I showing you all this? Because of this right here. I'll explain in a second. All right, hope y'all can still hear me. <clears throat> this is the big reveal, man. And uh, I kind of alluded to in the last video, like, you know, you're, you're collecting, your knife habit, all that, it, it, it kind of evolves. And it, it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. You get more involved in a hobby, like, joining YouTube and social media is like one step and you kind of just, you know, follow your own path. For a while now, you've been making my own stuff. Well, that right there and that right there is a CNC lathe and mill that I just bought. Uh, neither one of them are up and running 100% yet. I bought these kind of an as is, more or less like a shipping company took them. Um, the, the sh whoever shipped them didn't pay for the shipping. They got a lien. They were available. The dude didn't know what he had or what they were worth. A friend of a friend cued me into it, and bam, I got two CNCs. Now, these are like bottom of the line industrial, top of the line hobbyist style CNCs. So I don't really know what to expect. I do need a phase converter for the mill. The lathe is officially running. Like I can turn it on, I, it, everything returns to zero. It'll do what I tell it to do. I just don't have any tooling or anything to put in it to actually test it. And I need to do a few other things before I really get cranking. Like it doesn't have a coolant tank. I got to make one of those and a coolant pump and all that stuff. Same with, you know, the three phase on this one. And then I don't have zero two holders, uh, all that stuff. So I, I'm probably and realistically at least a couple months away from even really doing anything with these. <clears throat> I get roughly 10 hours a week or so that I could play around with some uh, CNC stuff. That's if I don't work at the other machine shop. So as they get busier, I'll probably start working there again part-time. So like, I don't know how much this is going to be like, hey, we're doing a production. No, we're not doing it. It's going to be slow, steady, but it does give me access. And I can go make stuff that I want 
without having to really get permission to go into a shop and do something like that. So this could be huge. I'm kind of approaching it like the hobbies elevated, not like I'm taking on a new business. So I hope that comes off clearly. Um, obviously I uh, started the Hinder Project X scales. I'm debating whether to wait and do them here or just to finish them at the machine shop because I got blanks pretty much cut, at least five of them cut anyhow. And I might just take it there and just spend like, you know, a few hours, you know, maybe two, three days there um, and get all those done and then kind of move on from there to like, you know, work out what this machine can do and that sort of thing. So these controls and these machines are different than the controls that I, different brand wise than I've ever used. So like there's always a learning curve with those things, like knowing what the machines can do, what they're capable of doing. Those are things you've got to kind of figure out. Um, so almost every mill, well, except for maybe a tool room mill or something like that, they all have tool changes. This thing doesn't even have a tool changer. So essentially it's a CNC bridge port. Like it's got limitations and it's got, you know, things that are better than a bridge port, but more or less, it's like I said, it's a simple style machine. And same with this one. And before anybody even asks, yes, I am a fucking hypocrite because these are made in China. The fuck I can do nothing about it. Like that. Yeah. These are paid for. I don't owe anything on them. I paid for them. I don't got no savings no more, but I paid for these things. They're sitting here owned. Like I'm trying to move forward in the hobby, but like in a different level. So yes, yeah, what I could afford right now. Do I want something better? Of course, like you always do. But I got height limitations on this shop. It's probably hard to see, but most of your tool changer is going to stick up way above this. I don't know if you can see the anaconda in the back, but uh, it it's probably, I probably got two foot clearance on this one. And this is probably the smallest one that I could put in this shop without having to bust the roof up or make something to other accommodations for it. So you want, you know, I gotta have the machines fit the shop. I can't make a new shop. I'm not at that position right now and I don't spend the time and I'm obviously not generating the cash for it. So that's kind of sort of the game plan for now. Like, you know, don't hit the light, dude. Come here, hang on. Does wants to come say hey again, at least to me anyhow. Um, so, all right, big guy, go ahead. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Um, so that's the huge reveal for me. Uh, whether you'll see it as a huge reveal for you or not, I don't know. But for me, that's tons of potential. So I hope to be starting to make my own hardware, like between the lathe and the mill. Uh, I hope to start making my own hardware, at least for what I want to do. So like Project X style stuff. I've talked to you guys a couple times about, you know, wanting to do my own hardware. I want to find different hardware, like. I've looked, I just don't find what I want out there. So why the fuck not make it? Like, will it be like production level? Am I going to be able to squirt out and sell like kits of a hundred or 200 a week? No, it's not going to be like that. It's probably going to be more in the custom level of I'll do my, my hardware. And if someone else wants something like that, maybe something like that, but I, I, you know, it's all up in the air. Who knows what I'm going to end up doing with it. I might not do any of what I'm planning on doing. It might turn into something completely different. It might turn into knife making. I don't know, but I got those options now. So huge reveal for the week. Uh, I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. Uh, probably not because I'm not showing you anything knife related. I'm showing you machines that can make knives. And as of right now, they're not even turning on. So it don't do nothing for you. Well, I could turn that, that single phase one on, but it's not going to do any good because if unless you know machines, it is what it is, right? All right, I'm a quick rambling. Uh, for those who watched part one and part two, I do appreciate it. Y'all know I'm long-winded as it is, but you're probably going to see more of what's coming off of these in the future. And so to get it all out of the, in the open there, yeah, I bought some CNC's. So high hopes. We'll see what happens. Thanks, y'all.